we spend one more, one damn dollar more on researching about lead poisoning, it is a waste of time. We know what to do. We need to clean up housing. We need to hire people from communities, and we need to train them. Exactly what I was saying is give power into people in the communities to make the change. We have fundamental change in this country. We have to though be we have to be bold about dollar investments in communities. It doesn't change at three million dollars, as I said. We have to talk about a half a billion dollars here and a half a billion dollars there. And if we want another stimulus in this country, then it ought to be one of them ought to be around environmental health and environmental practices. But we live in a country in 1937 we passed the nation's first housing standard, and in 1938, we mandated the use of lead-based paint in low-income housing. We mandated it. Mm. The federal government mandated it. Now, why is that a problem? Because in 1904, Sherwin-Williams, at their board of directors, had a memo that said it was killing babies and, and pregnant women, and it shouldn't, they shouldn't be making lead-based paint. In 1908, they decided to make lead-based paint. In 1922, League of Nations signed every country basically in the world signed on to ban the use of lead-based paint. What did the United States do? In 1938, we mandated it. And we mandated it for mainly African-American communities in this country. And so when I think we do have the political will, if you look at what is happening in this country, to take charge of this and to no longer say, it is okay if we have a repair, repainting, maintenance rule in the United States with the EPA, which is wonderful, but we have to have enforcement money behind it. Because if I work for the EPA and I have that rule, then I better have the tools to enforce. When we implemented enforcement on lead poisoning in Baltimore and in the state of Maryland, we had zero enforcement, sorry to say, under Kurt Schmoke, mayor for 12 years, served on the board of the Alliance 10 Child for Lead Poisoning, never prosecuted a single property owner in this city for lead. And I, 2000, Martin O'Malley did it, but he did it because of community pressure, because of political pressure, and because the Baltimore Sun was doing a series during the period of time of the election. Folks, we have an election in 2016. We have time to do something. And I'd like to say that Martin O'Malley is a saint, but don't trust me. He represented property owners before he took office. He wanted to repeal the warranty of habitability until I went crazy in his office and said no. But the reality is people do stuff when you can bring together the right political will. And the political will is not theirs, it's ours.